Good evening. Welcome back to Spirits and Ghost Stories. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens. And Carly Bird. Tell a story. We're going to try something a little bit different tonight, correct, Carly? And then I got a, uh, a scary thing in the news that I think is actually uh, kind of funny. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a little merging of Fishing the DMV and uh, Spirits and Ghost Stories. I know. He told me the name of it, and I'm actually really excited to hear how this all comes about. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very, it's honestly, the best way I can describe it is like gruesome, shocking. Yeah. But all, I can't wait to hear it. And hilarious at the same time. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, yeah. 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 It, I don't want to give too much away. Don't want to give too much Kinda away like there. what happened to me today while I was on break. Oh, yeah. So why don't we, before we get into our story, why don't you, uh, why don't you tell everyone at home what happened? So I'm not going to lie. This happens to me probably once every other year or so because I refuse to put shoes on when I go outside in the summertime. She thinks she's Native American. Today. I went outside to get the mail. I like to do that. I work from home, so I had like a 10-minute break. I was like, I'm just going to run out to the mailbox, see if I got anything. As you should. All right. So I walk to the mailbox in the grass. Then we have to cross our gravel driveway. Ouch. In bare feet. Then we get to the mailbox. I get to the mailbox. And this hornet has decided that the mailbox belongs to it. And I was like, oh, crap. So I kind of like did this little skirt sideways and a little skirt skirt sideways again because it just kept like following me and like spinning around the mailbox. So I opened the mailbox. There was nothing there. Okay. Slammed it shut. And then I like kind of like did some high steps to get away from it. I like quick little sprint. All right. So as I do this quick little sprint, I step on a bumblebee and it stings my toe. So literally, I just scream. I love how you're like you're you're like mad at this bee, like it cut you off in traffic. Like this thing had the audacity to sting you. Like, does it not know who you are? Literally, <laughs> I was just trying to get back to the house. I was already being chased by Mother Nature to get away from my own gosh darn mailbox. I was on my way back into the house, and right before this happens. I'm literally, I'm not going to lie to you, right before this happened, I was thinking, man, I sure do love walking outside in my bare feet. <laughs> I literally, I was like, mm, I'm a little fairy, okay? So then I step on this bumblebee, and I'm just like cussing the whole way back to the door, limp, limping, can't really run because it's, it's, I don't even know what toe you call that. It's the toe next to the pinky toe. It, it just stung it right on the very bottom of it. It's a big old swollen pinky toe toe, like a, like a lollipop. It was so painful. And then I just had to put ice on it for the next like two hours to numb the pain. Uh, every day that I am not here is an event. That is definitely for sure. So this has been the Times of Life in Carly. There's a little bit more information. Uh, huge shout out to, I think you guys are called Border Patrol or Patrolling the Border, I think. Uh, you guys actually won the uh, old person division in mounted gaming across America. Mounted gaming across America is yeah, a sport where you compete on horseback. It is a equine sport. We talk about it all the time. Um, yeah, we do. Just but for our new listeners, especially our European listeners, we actually got a ton of those, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, you know, we had our nationals competition this past yeah, weekend. Yeah, and they won. And my team won and out of eight and they out of well. eight teams. Uh, who is actually on your team? Uh, huge shout out to. I mean, just the first name. I just get her last name. Huge shout out to Linda. You know, Carly, of course. Sophie, Lauren, oh, and Michelle. Uh, I was about to say Sadie. <laughs> but yeah, Sophie, uh, Michelle, and then who was the last one? Oh, Lauren. 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 Huge shout Sadie's out. Mom, so Sadie's mom. Sadie's mom. Yeah. Why. So huge shout out to, I was at least a part of the family. Uh, huge shout out to all of them for, uh, for yeah, having a great competition and bringing glory back to the Border Patrol Nation. And I guess runner up was uh, Time Flies or Bomb Squad. This I actually don't remember. Yeah. So uh, I was too much in shock. Let us know in the comment section down below. Um, who actually came in second for the competition and then of course shout out to uh all the, the, the teams that won it intermediate and then also that won uh for masters or basically i guess it's, it's like it's open open it's now open. i get so confused by the new names i don't know why or maybe it's just my refusal to want to learn the new names you yeah. know what i mean yeah. but um yeah anyway i think it was uh colton's team that won yep. this year yep. correct full so, send. yeah full send so huge shout out to you guys for winning um Open division this year and then intermediate who that was Matt Brown's team, correct? His pony clubbers. Yeah. I don't know the team's name. Okay. Well, you guys know who you are, but huge shout out to you guys. If you actually watch it. Oh, there we go. Time flies. Time flies was runner up. Yeah. Uh, huge shout out to PCV. P 
Percival Ponies. Post Percival Ponies, who's watching right now. Uh, yeah, huge shout out. Time flies coming in, in second place. I don't know if you'll actually listen to this, but if you do, hey, we're giving you a shout out because it was a fun weekend and, you know, that's stuff that actually happened in our lives this weekend. Super great. So, yeah, yeah, it's really super great. And so I am very pleased uh, with how everything went down. No one got hurt. Um, I actually rode too. Uh, I'm not going to the next competition, sadly. I have just a lot of other things that I have to deal with right now. Uh, not like health or anything. It's fine. Um, you know, hopefully knock on wood. Job opportunities. It's probably a job. And if I get the job, it's really hard to be then like, oh, by the way, guys, I got to leave early. You know, right. the first week because I only have like so many days off. And this is something else like being like self-employed. I just got to get used to that where it's not like I'm off now. Peace. Peace, guys. Like, no, no, no. no you got to like. only worked for himself for the past 15 years. 50 and years, able 15, to just yeah. Be like, Oh, I'm just not going to work today. I don't feel like. Yeah. It. And I don't know how days accrue. So like part You'll of. You'll find out. It's different for every company. But you see, but yeah, but you see what I mean? So it's like, oh, okay, yeah. well, does that mean my 14 days start? I have 14 days for the rest of the year. Some and companies it does. And some. Yeah. You have to accrue it. You have to work. But you get my point. So it's like, do I, do, do they reset January 1 or they reset after a year? So it's like cute, you know, it's like, does it matter? It's like, oh, yeah, it's a little bit different. Because like if, like if it resets January 1, it's like, really okay, reset, cool. They don't really reset, they accumulate. Well, I, I didn't know if it's like. Oh, well, it depends on the company. Yeah, it depends on the company. Because I know some companies like do. They, it does change. And you're right. It, it does accumulate as well. But I don't know what we're dealing with here. Anyway, but I'm also not like a. Anyway, so fingers crossed yeah. that he actually gets his job. So anyway, now that we bored to death uh, everybody else on this on this live stream, uh, yeah, let's a uh, huge shout out for the Demigorg story that one is actually doing pretty well right now. Uh, sorry for the delay on all this stuff. I got a shark shark episode that's coming up, which is kind of cool because this year for Shark Week, I don't know how I feel about this, but Dwayne the Rock Johnson is hosting Shark Week this year, oh. which is kind of interesting. Didn't he so do no, that was somebody else that did it. Like they they, they have more celebrities now because I feel like it's not about sharks anymore. It's more about like. The, the celebrity that's actually hosting yeah because shark, shark week is i mean shark week is like the longest running program ever i think when it comes to like like televised tv on the discovery channel it's like 25 30 years old now mm -hmm. it's insane how long it's gone on for yeah. but um anyway i do have a shark episode coming out because i think that's kind of a cool timely thing to go with that um we might just make that a bonus episode because i really don't think it's a scary it's supposed to be this week no, it's supposed to be before August, so I have time. Oh, my bad. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. I just assumed before August meant like yeah. So get that next straight. Week. Um, but yeah, we have a really cool story tonight, and we're kind of getting back to our roots because we had the missing four one one. Yes, which was, I thought it was pretty creepy and very intense. And then we had more of a a parody slash rom com like uh. A, not a rom com. Not, rom com is the wrong word. Parody Sorry, guys. is a good one. Uh, too too much of what we're drinking tonight. Um, a pair. <sighs> The way Europeans assume redneck kids in the United States act. Yes. And it was hilarious. The throwing knife thing where this guy's just, he has all these guns and he and just keeps and chucking knives. knives. And then they all of a sudden they have a bomb. Yeah. It was just fantastic. Um, oh, and Peace of Pony says, most places allow you to a cure of two hours of care. Uh, huge shout out to uh, PCP Ponies. Uh, thank you so much. PCP? Yeah, I think that's a lot, a lot funnier. Okay. Just just think about like spotty ponies on PCP. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be actually a great team name. Mm -hmm. Anyway. So yeah, that's where we're at with that. But yeah, let's get into what we're drinking tonight. Tonight we are drinking moonshine, yep. if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Um, apple pie flavor. Apple pie flavor. I thought it went along with the story that we actually are reading this evening. Yeah. Just um, this is actually legal stuff, guys. You can buy it at the ABC store too. Link in. It's, um, then the brand is Midnight Moon. <coughs> Whoa, Ugh, Tom. That's a little slow too much. down. But yeah. Um, phew. Wow, my nostrils are burning. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So there's that. Oh, and I have uh, one quick announcement before we get into the store and everything else too. I thought this was pretty cool which was, let me get this up here, which has to do with Halloween this year um, for all of our Halloween people because fall is coming. If you like Halloween. If you like Halloween. And you like amusement parks. I think you like this, that Hershey You'll Park. Be thrilled. Hershey Amusement Park today announced the creation of the new Dark Knight's Frightful Immersion Haunt Experience Ooh. that spreads its shadows over the Hershey Park landscape every evening during Hershey Park Halloween season. Uh, the four-acre edition of Dark Knight's represents the largest investment to date for the seasonal event. With three new scare zones and four horrifying haunted houses. Ooh. As part of the integrated thrilling experience, guests can only find at Hershey Park. And this starts September 17th through October 30th. Nice. So I thought that was really cool that they're starting to really get this uh, dark night. And, and this I'll link this in the episode description for anyone that cares. But I think it's cool because I saw this like, oh, guess what? It's coming. Like, you know, we're 
what late July. It's coming. And guess what? Halloween. Yeah. Halloween season's finally getting here, which is interesting for our channel because that's kind of our bread, <laughs> kind of our bread and butter. Yeah. So it's cool getting on to our season too. Like we'll have it more. It's the season we look forward to. Oh my goodness. All and year. so and and we're gonna have to like so the people that we usually hang out with um for Halloween, I don't think are gonna be able to do it this year for other reasons, for for uh, medical reasons. So um well, I'm trying to keep it vague, but yeah. But anyway, so yeah, if you guys want to actually hang out and go to a haunted attraction with us or dress up, we love to do that every year. Hit us up. Uh, yeah, we, we love that. We need more do that Halloween but, uh, enjoying enthusiasts. Absolutely. So, but I think that gets us ready for our story. Carly, what is going on today? Prepare now for the tale. I don't need this superstitious crap. Even so, I leaned forward so that my grandma Eliza could slip the cross necklace over my head with her trembling hands. Never take it off, she gasped, barely able to form words. Her mouth kept opening and closing, fish-like, but I couldn't decipher the words she repeated over and over. It sounded like itch ath. But that didn't make any sense. It wasn't even a real word. Still, I nodded, and that seemed to satisfy her. Her hand dropped from my cheek. She let out a ragged breath and turned her face toward the bright garden outside her cabin window. Two seconds later, I witnessed death for the first time. I was 15 years old. Grandma Eliza's white wood cross necklace clashed with all my black goth wardrobe, but I wore it anyway. About half the people in Grandma's village wore those necklaces too, and I needed to do everything I could do, could do to fit in, because Grandma Eliza's village was about to become my new home. Mm. My parents told me we were moving just a few hours after Grandma's death. After I overheard the whole true story from the gossips in the village bar. A few weeks before Grandma Eliza died, my father knew for sure that his dry cleaning business was going bankrupt. We were going to lose the big city apartment, the car, everything. My father hadn't visited Grandma Eliza in over six years, and he hadn't brought us to her deathbed out of love or compassion. We'd come back to Grandma's village because we had nowhere else to go. My new classmates knew all of this and more. It was like they knew more about my own life than I did. I learned about the mysterious, explosive argument that had caused my father to leave town when he was around my age. I learned that my ancestors had once been wealthy landowners, but had lost everything overnight when Grandma was just a little girl. I felt a tightness in my chest as I understood the true reason why Grandma Eliza had lived such a frugal, self-sufficient life. She simply hadn't wanted her family to starve again. The more I learned about my family history, the more false and hollow my life began to feel. Sometimes the only thing that felt real anymore was that little wooden cross around my neck. Even if it hadn't been for all of those uncomfortable revelations, I soon discovered that life in Grandma's village wasn't what I'd remembered from childhood. Back then, I didn't need much more entertainment than splashing in the cool shady creek behind Grandma's house or catching weird bugs in her garden. As a teenager, though, the village was boring as hell. People knew so much about me, I discovered, because there was absolutely nothing to do in Grandma's village except gossip, stir up drama, and tell tall tales. I understood why Grandma and Liza had spent so much time talking to her sheep, her chickens, and even her tomatoes. They were probably the only sane conversation partners in the whole village. Since my parents had sold most of Grandma's animals, I wound up hanging out with Luca, a local footballer and a true assholeer. <laughs> <laughs> Luca had a sarcastic comment or a hurtful joke for everyone who crossed his path, and I was no exception. Even his own football team watched, wanted to get rid of him, but couldn't because he was the best midfielder in town. Luca treated me like shit, making fun of my big city obsessions like obscure brands and good coffee, but then Luca treated everyone like shit. In fact, he was the only person in the village who didn't treat me differently for having been born someplace else. 
I soon realized that Luca was actually a kind and sensitive person. Being an asshole was just his way of dealing with life in the village, of dealing with the fact that he was a not-too-smart, not-too-handsome guy from an unimportant corner of planet Earth. The past is gone, the present is garbage, and the future is doomed, Luca used to say. Then I'd tell him that he was clearly a poet at heart. He'd tell me to go fuck myself, and we'd <laughs> kick the ball around a little more. Wow, okay, that is an interesting role model. I know, <laughs> his only friend. That's, uh, wow, that is sad. It's like my childhood, my goodness. <laughs> you had a great yeah, childhood. Huge shout out to Seth, I'm talking to you. How much you beat little what me a my jerk. whole life. <laughs> Two years passed like that, playing football in marshy football pitch beside the town dump, drinking green alcohol from bottles left behind by Luca's booze hound relatives, and taking endless walks through the forest valleys around the village. There was one path, however, that we never took. It didn't look any different from the others, just a narrow dirt path that led up one side of the rocky stream that trickled down from the distant hills, but Luca absolutely refused to set foot on it. We don't go that way, Luca told me simply when I asked. It's tradition. I laughed. Respect for tradition hadn't stopped Luca from drunkenly pissing on the door of the village's ancient church, and now I was supposed to believe it was stopping him from going down a trail? My blood ran cold when Luca told me the name of the trail. They call it the Witch Path. Witch Path. Mm, red flag. Witch Path. Itch Ath. My grandmother's dying words. Oh, shit. According to Luca, all of the town's people crossed the street when they approached and would not even stray dogs went near the trailhead. Red flag. So why did the witch path look so clean and well-traveled? We were 16 that summer, and Luca and I didn't have much time left to solve the mis mystery. Soon I'd be preparing for college, while Luca would begin to work in a machine shop a few towns over. It wasn't what he wanted, but his grades and work ethic, but his grades and his worth ethic, it was the best he was likely to get, and he knew it. Our walks turned into long therapy sessions, in which I tried, and failed, to save my friend from a spiral into alcoholism and depression. Good lord. Yeah. This is not an uplifting story he so He wasn't far. going very far. Just when I thought that Luca was at his lowest point, he said something that surprised me. We were on one of our night walks. Our bottle of stolen liquor was almost empty, and we were passing the unmarked trailhead of the witch path when my friend declared, You know what? Fuck it. I want to see where it goes. I could hardly say no, and yet, the few rumors around the witch path that had filtered down to me were disturbing, to say the least. According to one rumor, some foreign cult had formed a self-sufficient commune down there, and folks who got close to their compound were never seen again. Another stated that anyone who walked down the witch path felt horribly soon, or horribly ill soon after, not because of a curse, but rather because there were just so many ticks in the bushes along the way that any traveler who walked down it was virtually guaranteed to get Lyme disease. Mm. The oldest tale stated that a woman lived in a hut near the headwaters of the stream. A woman who had been there long before the village and would be there long after. She could grant wishes and bestow magic gifts, but no one who went down that path came back the same. Good lord. You don't have to come, you know, Luca reminded me. In fact, you probably shouldn't. The witch path glowed silver in the moonlight. As I set my foot onto it, I felt I'd crossed a frontier from which there was no going back. The trail wound uphill through a narrow gorge where the night air was cool and smelled like wet rocks. Luca and I were used to hearing sudden frightening animal noises during our night walks, but on that trail... The only sound was the wind in the trees. Luca didn't say a word. He only trudged determinately, like a pilgrim eager for his journey's end. I too avoided breaking the silence. It felt like we were being listened to. Halfway up the trail, my heart leapt into my throat when an enormous owl took flight up overhead. I wasn't superstitious, but it felt like an omen. My hand had unconsciously moved to my grandma Eliza's necklace. 
We walked for what felt like forever. The hills, valleys, and tiny villages spread out like a crumpled blanket below us, looking unfamiliar and haunted in the moon's silver glow. It could have been a thousand years earlier or later. Luca and I could have been the, pe the last people on Earth, and we wouldn't have known it. I never knew all of this was up here, Luca whispered. Incredible. I guess the witch enjoys a good view, I joked. I was just glad that Luca was seeing the beauty in anything again. Tall grasses, only occasionally broke by bone white rocks, covered these bald hilltops. That's pretty cool. The trail disappeared, but the way was clear enough. Ever upward, where the hills met the stream. It should have ended there. We should have taken in the gorgeous views, felt renewed by the night air, walked back to town, and gone on with our lives. Mm -hmm. But we didn't. A grove of trees grew in the shadow of the cliffs. In front of it, an ancient-looking but well-kept hut casts its shadow over a vast, fruitful garden. One part of the rumor, at least, was true. Someone was living up here. Whoever they were, I doubted that they'd take kindly to trespassers. I opened my mouth to whisper to Luca that we should turn back, but he'd gotten far ahead of me. I crept after him in the gloom alongside the garden fence. Water trickled up ahead. We had reached the spring where the stream began. The end of the witch path. And that's where we met her. She hummed a hauntingly beautiful tone as she dried her hair beside the moonlit pool. She'd been bathing in the spring, and silver water droplets glistened on her bare skin. My stomach nodded with the uneasy feeling that we were seeing something forbidden. I grabbed Luca's collar and tried to drag him back down the trail, but he dug his heels in like a stubborn mule. The woman glanced over her shoulder. There was no way she could have seen us, and yet somehow she made eye contact with us mm -mm. and winked. No, heck no. <laughs> Are you going to stand there and stare all night? Or will you come by and say hello? The woman asked. Luca managed to make some sort of dry gulping noise with his throat. It's late, but I don't get many visitors up here. Why don't you come inside and have some tea? For our people watching, if an old lady, like the problem is like, that's the thing about witches too, is they're just not as threatening. You mean at first, when they first, when you first meet them? <sighs> old people in general are not as threatening. True, because you assume that they're weak. Not just that, like, you know, maybe sweet, whatever, whether it's an old man, an elderly woman, you're not thinking like, oh no, like this, this person's going to like eat me or, or shank me or something like that. True. Um, I guess now, I mean, I guess a lot of witches basically like a homeless person, so I mean, they look like them because they don't usually look really nice, do they? Yeah, they do. Do they really look nice? I always like have this, this caricature of what they're supposed to look like in my head. Well, from from my understanding, witches can like morph into younger people. Oh, uh, okay, I got you. But they—that's not their true form. So they can—they can—they can make themselves appear different. Yes. On the outside. Uh, okay, that makes sense. I'm that's sorry. the stories that I've heard. C continue, continue. Okay. Um. The woman turned to us and smiled. With a damp sash wrapped around her, she was somehow even more enchanting than she'd been when she was completely nude. I'd expected dead... She was naked? Yeah, she was getting a bath out in the water. You're not listening. I don't know how I missed that part about the nakedness. Yeah, she was naked. That's why Luca didn't want to leave. Continue. <laughs> Welcome back to the story, Tom. <laughs> I'd expected dead-eyed cultists or a mad old hag, not a beautiful, funny, self-sufficient young woman who looked to be just a few years older than Luca and I. When she stopped to pick some tomatoes from her lush garden, she twisted them off the vine with an expertise that rivaled my grandmother's. As she led us through the garden, she explained that the villagers spread rumors about her because they were so close-minded and set in their ways. Luca and I could definitely sympathize. If you ventured up here, it's because you're different. The woman lit a candle as we stepped inside the hut, although I never saw her strike a match. You understand that the point of being alive is to do what you want, 
not to do what you're told. Luca nodded, his eyes following the woman's every movement, but I was uncomfortable. The night air had been cool, but it was oppressively hot and humid inside the woman's hut. Grandma's cross began to itch. It felt heavy and abrasive beneath my shirt. I longed to take it off. Your tea is ready. We all toasted, and I took a sip. Why was it daylight outside? I wondered vaguely. Nope. Luca was unmoving. Backlit, backlit lump beside me. I tried to speak to him, but I couldn't move my lips or any other part of my body. His face looked somehow blurry. I could hear the woman speaking, rustling around in the dim interior of the hut. She continued to speak, but it was like I was hearing two conversations, one superimposed over the other. In the first, the voice of the young woman was telling me everything I wanted to hear about myself, my future, even my relationship with my family, things she couldn't possibly have known. My head nodded along helplessly. In the second, a guttural, dusty voice growled something very different. Willful one, ain't you, dearie? No matter, I'll break you like all the rest, but I tire, oh, how I tire of waiting, when ye flesh is so tender. She reached out a hand, or was it a claw, for my face. Grandma Eliza's necklace exploded. I realized that it was not the wooden cross that mattered, but rather a symbol that my grandmother had carved into the back, like a glyph that was now burning on my chest with a purplish white flame. Mm. In its glow, I saw Luca's skin drying on the wall. His features had looked so strange and blurry because his face was gone. Luca's eyes and tongue Fudge. and innards were preserved in jars along the wall, along the with those of many others. Holy crud. The woman, or the thing underneath the woman, shrieked. Its false appearance had been blasted away by the symbol's purifying light. The thing that hissed at me from the darkness was huge, hideous, and beyond reckoning. The reek of the place hit me all at once, overpowering herbs, strange fungi, rotting flesh. I backed away towards the door, leaving Luca's red, raw corpse behind. The, simple, the symbol on my chest began to flicker. Grandma's magic, or whatever it was, had almost run its course. I scrambled out into the, wooden, the woman's garden, dodging the vines that reached out for my feet. The leaves that whipped across my face. A shriek of rage followed me as I fled. By the time I reached the village, the symbol's glow had faded. The only proof that any of it had happened were the burn marks where Grandma Eliza's necklace had been. As I watched the sun rise over the sleepy village, I knew that my grandmother's gift had saved my life. And that was the tale of the promise. That is a freaking good story. That was awesome. Wow. I mean, I want to clap, but that like it got it got good there. And uh, gosh, and and huge shout out to the other kid. Like he, you know, that's one way to end your depression right there. Luca. Uh, yeah. yeah. So he doesn't have to worry about sacrifice that anymore. yourself to a witch. Yep. And, and then again, so kids, boys and girls at home. So if you see a hot naked lady in a pond by herself, run, run away. That's a, don't that's stick a trap. around. That's a trap. That's simping hard for the wrong type of people. You don't want that cougar. You, don't. That- <laughs> you always ask the right questions though. Like right before it happens in the story, you're always like, wait a minute, but aren't witches old? Wait a minute. Let's talk about witches. Uh, yeah. Like, I kinda, kinda, talk kinda, about kinda... witches. Okay. Well, we can have this conversation <clears throat> and you can ruin it. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of just ruined that there. Sorry about that. I, I, I pulled the wrong thing. Oh, huge shout out to, uh, we have a guest here. Huge shout out to, uh, Tyler Henson, good story. Tyler Thanks, Henson, Tyler. Good story. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, I really like the witches, especially it goes back to like the Appalachian lore and folklore. Of that, That's exactly what it made me think of. And I, I was really wish so we had this story <laughs> that I didn't have the story the same time we did the Appalachian witchcraft. For, for Appalachian witch witchcraft, because uh, that was really good. I know. Um, it was kind of like a follow up story. For that no, it is. But it gets back to like the crystals and the herbs and stuff like that and yeah. talks about the woods and people are like, Tommy, you're rambling. It's like, this is true. It's probably the moonshine. But what, I, what I'm trying to piece together. I did a lot of research on that. Okay. What I, what I tried to piece together with this is you're taking all these little pieces and you're putting them together of 
you have to stay with the tribe. You have medicine that no one's really used to. You have these like clans of people that are off away from, from the rest of civilization, um, evolving a culture. And that all pieces together with this idea of witchcraft, where there's always these like pieces that hit it where it's the Celtic mythology from these certain groups of people in the world. They, they migrated over here. A witch really is somebody that's probably practicing a different type of religion yes. than the Puritans. Um, granny, granny magic was a lot of it was herb healing and things of that ilk. Um, I put a lot of research in this. So I still got this fresh in my head, believe it or not. And so, and then I think it's really interesting where it's like, why are witches? Why did I say that? Why did I think, Oh, well, aren't witches old? Because really, if you get down to what a witch is, and really with granny magic or, or, or Appalachian witchcraft here, it was usually the elder woman of your group that had this knowledge. Right. And that is where this idea of a witch being old like that in the woods is, because that's the person that would harbor it. Um, well, they were the doctors at one point in time, right? Yeah. They be, were the ones that actually, they had been through so much and mm -hmm. they had seen so much that they had learned um, ways to doctor people and heal you know, throughout their lives. And that had been passed down from their grandparents. From from generation to generation. Yes. And and back in the day, you know, women did have it hard. Like, I mean, if they, but, but on the flip side, if they survived childbirth, usually they did live longer than men, mm -hmm. just generally speaking. Cause you think back then, like with, with wars and things like that, men right. were the ones that got recruited. So it wasn't uncommon. If you had a woman that reached those ages, they were revered in a lot of these cultures. Um, a great example of this was uh, the Northmen. And that really even like hinted at it too, where the witches there were female mm -hmm. and the women that were older were really revered, you know? And so I thought that was really interesting. And, and they had this almost this magical quality to them, uh, whether it was the individual that was like the blind witch that our, the main protagonist saw trying to get his tear or uh, I guess his love interest who had this, I don't know, just this call, uh, Quaker magic almost like she had this earth magic, like this, this hint of that they talk about. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's like something really interesting that even in like Nordic mythologies, they talk about how women have this connection with the magic realm. And so I think that's really cool how this all culminates in this. And now when you listen to these stories, I listen to it with a different like veil over my eyes. Yeah. He's like, oh, I can see how all this connects with all these stories. Right. Um, and now with what I'm about to tell you, <laughs> this has nothing to do with this. Just bear with <laughs> me because this is funny. It's completely different. I'm getting this deep explanation <laughs> so here of all this stuff. And then, uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to come up with this story right here. Let me make sure. I want to make sure this is all popped up big on the screen. But Carly, that was that was a really really good story. Thank um, you. I, I really really enjoyed that one. Now compared to that, we're gonna get with scary stuff in the news. And so for our scary stuff in the news, Ooh, we have already. this one. Oklahoma man says Bigfoot made him kill his fishing partner. Police say Whoa. crack was probably involved. Oh my goodness, I love this so much. A day out hand fishing for cat oh my god this is so canadian oh, huh. oh i love this canadian look at it so a day out hand fishing for catfish so they're noodling you noodling. know what noodling is you don't no. know what noodling is okay we got to show her some stuff tonight guys we're noodling so, hand fishing for catfish on the south canadian river in pon titicoco country oklahoma oh, lord what did that say pon tococo pon tococo Pontecoke? How, how is that Coke? Help me. Ponto. Can you spell it for me? I can't see it from here. Mm, oh, sorry. It looks too small. It's Pon... Pontotoc. Pontotoc. There you go. Guys, this is, that's County not what I'm going to Oklahoma. Oklahoma has turned into a murder investigation after a man claims Bigfoot forced him to kill his friends. Oh, no. This guy definitely looks like the type that would murder he one of his like friends. Look friend at this sucker was. here. But I just love how this story leads a day out hand fishing, fishing for catfish. catfish. South Canadian River. You see, you have to say with an accent or it doesn't work. <laughs> Larry Sanders. Oh, good. Larry Sanders, 53, stands charged with first degree murder after allegedly attempting first to a family member and later police to kill on his noodling fishing partner. What? Oh, my God. I love this so much. He admitted it. His, his noodling fishing partner. His noodling fishing partner, Jimmy Knight, who Sanders claimed wanted him dead by the hand of a mythical monster, Bigfoot. Noodling is a popular fishing technique used in the southern states of the great country of America to catch fish by sticking one's hand inside the fish's mouth. Oh, I've seen that. So for you people um, that. that don't know, we, I'm, I'm going to, I got to, sorry, I got to show you, I got to show you this clip here. 
We'll get this up next. I feel like we need some banjo music. So what, what they do, and I can only show a small clip here, is they they find holes in, in the ground in the water and they stick their hands in the water and they tickle the fish's mouth until the fish bites them on the hand and then they pull them out of the water. This is the most Arkansas, West Virginia type of uh, way Whoa, to fish. Yeah, that fish is so big. So you see what they do then? They have to put their whole hand through the gills. No, no, that's what she did just to finish catching it. But what they initially do, you stick your hand in a hole. And you don't know what's in there. And when you feel something, you shake your fingers to see if it bites you. It could be a snapping turtle, an otter, oh a snake. Oh, my god! Or a catfish. No. So you have these massive suckers right here. <gasps> and that's what you end up trying to do. What if it's an actual snapping turtle? You lose your fingers. People lose their fingers all the time doing this. That's why more and more people use gloves, so that way their fingertips just stay on. Yeah, so they can they can go back to the emergency room. I I kid you not. Oh I kid gosh. you not. So uh, yeah, that's what that right there. So I thought <laughs> that's what noodling is. So anyway, let's continue the story. The local sheriff John Christian. That's a good sheriff's name in a wow. small town. John Christian, local media expert. I want to say he's a local media expert that he Sanders appealed to by under the influence of someone when he told police he had struck, strangled, and then drowned <gasps> Matt. What? Yeah. He went all the way. So his statement was that Mr. Knight had summoned Bigfoot to come and kill him. And that's why he had to kill Mr. Knight, Christian told local reporters. <gasps> Oh my goodness. I just, I, kind of I absolutely love this. Christian said that the local that. prosecutor would likely push for the death penalty if Sanders is found guilty in this case. Well, yeah. He admitted How the to hell? It. And there's so much more stuff I want to know about this. Like, what do you, like, what led to him thinking that this guy summoned Bigfoot? It says you still have to prove all of the elements of the crime and what the suspect is telling you. You have to prove that that's actually what happened, said the police officer. But I just love. That this guy, I love how this is like the commercial here, like night terror Bigfoot. But look at this son of a bitch. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry for my language, guys. I apologize. But look at him. And I just, uh, I, every time I see him, I can't it's help but get stare. into my accent. And this idea here, I just, the idea that you, you think a Bigfoot out of anything, not a ghost or a demon or the devil, the devil it makes was sense. Bigfoot. It's Bigfoot. Right. Crack was involved. Yeah. Guys, yeah. In the comment section below, let me know what drug do you think this guy was ingesting? Where he, or, or do you think it was just an altercation with his friend? I know I have a lot of fishermen that actually follow me on Facebook. Yeah, but if he I had could... an altercation with his friend, don't you think that he would have said, I mean, anything else? Like he was trying to kill me, not Bigfoot told me to do it? Yeah. I think it's also like this guy here definitely looks like a valed valedictorian student. I mean, he looks like he is sharp. I mean, he's got his shit together. So True. I believe he had a cold panic and he came up with Sasquatch. <laughs> yeah, the cold sweats. Um, like... <laughs> but honestly, I just, my gosh. Where did his Jimmy Bob go? His whole face doesn't even look well... correct. Like his, is his ears lined up? No. Did you realize that? Wow. God, he's ugly. I want a mask of him though for Halloween. That would be so cool. Do that. And I could like put a t-shirt on the Sasquatch took my friend, but but forced <laughs> to kill him. I love that. Sasquatch made not me the do demon, it. not anything else, but Bigfoot. What a wow. I'll dress there. up like a fish. Uh, what I noodle you? No, it's a, it's a very, no, it's a very adult. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's very adult. Why did you say um, that? You were, we were just talking about fish noodling. So anyway, guys, that's scary. <laughs> that, that, that right there is uh is scary, scary stuff in the news yeah scary stuff in the news i don't know why an excel spreadsheet just popped up that's a little <laughs> just weird show everybody but uh, I, I don't know so the next thing we're going to, is going to do is graphing linear equations so I should really put you guys <laughs> to sleep. but no that was uh that was spirits and ghost stories that was that was a fun story i like how we had you with a good story and me finding just a a world beater yeah. of a a perfect mwah, scary things in the news good really job, love babe. that one um and so guys the the moral of the story is sometimes it's okay to google search while driving that that's the moral story please don't do that please don't do that at home let's guys. wrap it up while we're ahead. um yeah no absolutely uh yeah uh a little little spoilers for next week we don't know what's going to happen so uh <laughs> we, we have... <laughs> <laughs> it's not a spoiler you dingling all so, right uh, had we're, we're really going to surprise you guys next week because we don't even know what's going to happen <laughs> but we will be launching an episode uh next tuesday so we'll see you then on spirits and ghost stories bye everybody <laughs> <laughs>